Act for Autism is a team committed to giving young autistic people a voice. In our four-day film project, 12 young people came together to share their experiences. Using drama and play, they seek to challenge the misrepresentations of autism. Hello, I'm George. Hello, my name is Dottie. Hello, my name is Cameron. Hello, my name is Sam. Hello, my name is Penilla. Hello, my name is Lika. Hello, my name is Barnaby. Hello, I'm Alice, the sparkly magical fairy from the East. Hi, my name's Teddy. Hi, I'm Jacob. Nathaniel's on the case. <laughs> <laughs> On the project, using improvisation and exploring ideas together, we decided that we wanted people to know about autism from our perspective. We challenged some of the stereotypes. One of the things we don't like is when people say, you don't look autistic. You don't look autistic. You don't look autistic. I'm not different, I just don't talk to people I don't know. Do I have to be like Captain Marvel? Just! Go away! Just because I don't look autistic, does it mean I'm not? Well, of course I don't look autistic. No one does. It's all about my mind, not my body. I have the same feelings as you, so stop judging me now. That is mean. Don't say that to me. That is bullying. What does autism look like? Who are you to judge my parents? Should I have green skin or something? How would you know what an autistic person would look like? I know that you often intend it to be a compliment, but it feels like an unintended insult. In a week where we heard politicians go blah, 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 we saw a lovely young presenter in a red and white scarf talking to an old man about autism. Of this programme. Yeah, it's great. Hello, and welcome to our TV show, Outdated Experts. Here we have our guest who is an outdated expert on autism. Hello. Hello. Can you tell me more about autism? For instance, how would you know that someone is, is autistic? A oh, good question. I have three main indicators to show if someone is autistic. Uh, firstly, they show no empathy. Well, that is ridiculous. Some of the most empathetic people on the planet. Too empathetic. Too, they carry it yeah. too much, far too much, and then they let it really get to them. Yeah, it's like, it's people. really difficult to get rid of mm. that empathy. You know, I bore my eyes out at every film I watch. Secondly, they make no friends. They like to spend their time on their own. What's this? That's <laughs> no. I have multiple friends. Two of them are sitting here. Exactly. It's not that I don't want friends. It's just that sometimes I struggle a bit socially and I don't want to be around people all the time. And, and thirdly, they're very good at maths. They love numbers. I'm really bad at maths. Yeah, Shane. I'm terrible at maths. I'm I absolutely have to have extra terrible. Maths lessons. It's not that we're good at maths. It's that some people work at faster rates than others. Ah, oh, okay. I can see why they call you the outdated expert. Oh, Thank goodness. You. Yeah, so can we. <laughs> what causes autism? Ah, uh, many believe it is due to bad parenting. <laughs> that is ridiculous. No. no. My parents are really good. And there are lots of people where, like, one sibling is autistic and the other isn't, and they have the same parents. Yeah. How do you explain that? Really? Now that definitely sounds outdated to me. I agree with that lady on the television there. Okay, some autistic people find it hard to have eye contact. Mm. Can, can you tell us why that is? Well, it's just bad behaviour. I mean, if they tried harder, they should be able to do it. Eye contact, that's really hard because oh. what part of the face do you look yeah, at? There's yeah. that many bits yeah. and then you don't know whether to look centrally it because that's so systematic. It's and... as well. It's really yeah. just... Oh, it's so uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Well, it's just how people see us. If you don't make eye contact, then you're considered to be rude Still and ill-mannered. Uh, thank you so much for that very mm, interesting comment. I can see why they call you our uh, outdated expert. Mm -hmm. It's really worrying that people actually still believe yes. this yes. stuff. Yeah. Yes. Like, it's still widely spread. Like, those are the most common things people think about autism. Yes, it just goes to show that mm. clearly he was not educated in any way, shape or yeah. form. Might have been educated in the 1960s. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's all we have time for now, folks. And next week, 
we, we, we will have a new outdated expert and our outdated expert thinks that the moon is made of cheese and Elvis is still alive. <laughs> Isn't he? Who knows? Bye folks, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Not being understood can add to the anxiety we often feel. Everyday things can be hard for us as our sensory systems send us the wrong signals. Our hearts beat faster, our brains can feel scrambled, and our words just disappear. Processing all the information to make sense of the world can be overwhelming. Here are some things that can help. We need to feel connected. You need to understand that connecting with us doesn't always mean talking face to face physical reassurance or even phone calls. Be friendly by learning to understand how we feel. To be nice and kind and understand my feelings. Give me me time, I might need some space. If you're calm and I can see that you're calm, that makes me calm. Break things down into small chunks and use less words. Let me use my coping mechanisms to help me calm down and don't judge them, even if they are a little bit weird. Let me play drums more in my life and just let it be. Talk to us in a calm way like you would in a general conversation. Do not shout or talk to us in an angry, annoyed or demanding tone of voice. Let me decide for myself. They're my choices, not yours. Don't overdo it. Be natural. It might seem like you're faking it. It's important how you communicate with us. Say what you mean and don't use jargon to confuse us. We have the same feelings and needs as anybody else, but we can't always express them clearly, which confuses the people who love and support us. We found the confidence to talk about our feelings and coping strategies. When we feel you understand us and are on our side, we can achieve anything. When I'm having a meltdown, I want people just to leave me alone and leave me to it and not laugh at me or judge me. Because that just makes it a whole lot worse. You're not that self-aware when having a meltdown. I know every single case is different, but when it's quite, a, but it's, um, the ca that's the case for me. It feels hard. It feels hard and, and it feels weird inside when I'm angry because I like to be quite. I like to be nice, quiet, and happy more than angry and 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 annoyed. Basically, when I'm calm, I don't feel like people can hurt me as well as they can when I'm angry. It is something that needs to be taken into consideration. Of you wouldn't um, ask somebody who had. Um, a visible birth defect to do something they weren't capable of, but because it's invisible, people often think that, oh no, 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 it doesn't exist. It's not there. I can't see it, so I won't acknowledge it. And I won't help. It's not very nice <laughs> on a bad day to have autism. Um, usually a bad day will involve a lot of stress, a lot of horrible negative feelings. My chest tightens up and I get dizzy. Mostly that's caused by like loud noises or crowded spaces or if things don't go right for me. Like if I fell out with a friend or I'm having an argument with somebody. Yes, it makes you very tense, especially my upper back, my neck really, really tense. Um, more self-conscious of things around you and maybe how I'm acting or what I'm doing because I'm just feeling more pressured and I just don't want to be in that situation. I, get, I seem to get angry and impatient with people when, even though they haven't actually done anything to upset me or anything, I still may get angry and impatient with them if I'm stressed about something. Quite complicated, really, and quite confusing. If it, it doesn't feel nice. I shut myself in cupboards, put a few duvets in maybe, just to help myself feel enclosed. Because I pretend that that's the only world there is, and it's a very small world, basically. And that helps me calm down a lot. Sometimes, like, I can't breathe sometimes. I learned how to breathe over the years and to calm down my breathing. Well, I have lots of different coping mechanisms, but um, one of them is I like to use this watch here. And what I do is I put it against my ear and I listen to the ticking sound. And what I can do is if I'm struggling to breathe, I can time my breathing with the sound of the watch. And it's very sort of regulating and helps me get my breathing back to a normal rate. Having so many different things in my head, you know, rolling around and I'm trying to pick which one 
which one is the best one. It's almost like a, a bubble rolling and grind. You have to catch the right bubble for it. When they're calm, they just explode and just fall down on to the, the go round and just, you know, not too stressed. I can be a bit off of people, but I don't mean to be. If I say something to my friend, which seems mean to them, but I honestly don't mean it in that way. They think I, I don't like them or I'm being moody with them. I just don't want them to feel like I'm doing that to them. Like, I don't, I don't want to fall out with people because I just, I love them and I don't mean it in that way. Thank you.